Hello viewers, thank you for joining us. This is an English edition of news from Dalsan TV, Somalia's premier television news network, broadcasting to you the latest news from Somalia and around the world in both English and Somali. My name is Yunis Deku and these are some of our top news headlines for the day. UNHCR Commissioner calls for rapid scale-up of assistance to drought victims in Somalia. Humanitarian agency warns of risk of outbreaks for newly arrived refugees in the Dab refugee camp. And James Wan tenure as UN Special Envoy to Somalia comes to an end. Welcome to the broadcast. The UN Special Representative for Somalia, Ambassador James Wan, who served in the capacity since 2019, has concluded his tour of duty in Mogadishu. Mr. Swan survived an attempt on his life at the office of Mogadishu boss, according to Al-Shabaab, and that led to the death of the mayor and governor of Banadir Abdurrahman, Engineer Riso, who died in the explosion. Ambassador Swan had just left the headquarters of the regional administration in Mogadishu before a suspected Al-Shabaab suicide bomber detonated an explosive vest. The special representative of the United Nations mission in Somalia, Ambassador James Swan, has concluded tenure as the head of mission in Mogadishu. The president of the Federal Republic of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, had a farewell meeting at the presidential palace on Tuesday with the special representative of the United Nations Secretary General to Somalia, Mr. James Swan. Swan has completed his diplomatic work in our country, said Villa Somalia in a statement. The president congratulated Ambassador Swan for the role he took part in supporting the government of Somalia especially in the emergency drought as well as the war against Al-Shabaab. Appointed by the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on May 2019, Mr. Swan is the senior official of the UN team in Somalia. He has broad oversight of all UN operations in Somalia, including two UN missions, 23 agencies, funds and programs that together have nearly 2,000 national and international staff total budget activities of up to close to 2 billion US dollars and work in a range of areas across political development and humanitarian spheres. Prior to assuming his current role with the world body in Somalia, Mr. Swan had nearly three decades career within the foreign service of the United States of America. Most of his diplomatic work focused on helping African countries as they faced complex political and security transitions. In his bilateral diplomatic career, Mr. Swan held numerous positions related to Somalia and the Horn of Africa. This includes being the U.S. Special Representative for Somalia, the Ambassador to Djibouti, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for East and Central Africa, the Africa Director in the Bureau of Intelligence and Research, and a Political Officer in the Office of the Special Envoy for Somalia. He also served as the U.S. Ambassador to the Democratic Republic of Congo, in addition to prior staff assignments in the Republic of Congo, Cameroon, Nicaragua, and Haiti. He replaced Nicholas Haysom, who was expelled from Somalia, as the U.N. stop envoy accused of shaming the world's body by acting like the country's ruler. Meanwhile, the UN Refugee Agency has called for an increased assistance to help victims of drought in Somalia, the head of the agency who is on visit to the country said urgent supply of food and non-food items is required to help millions starving due to food shortages. The agency warns that more people displaced by the drought are, setting, are settling at refugee camps in neighboring Kenya and Ethiopia. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, has called for a rapid scale-up of humanitarian assistance to help avert the deteriorating humanitarian situation in drought-hit Somalia. A catastrophic drought has pushed communities to the brink of famine. Over 4.3 million people are acutely food insecure across the country as the Horn of Africa region faces its worst drought in 40 years. Thousands of people have recently been forced to flee their homes in search of food and water for their families and livestock. The High Commissioner was in the country to assess and discuss the deepening drought emergency as the Horn of Africa region faces its worst drought in four decades. According to the UNHCR-led Protection and Return Monitoring Network, 
The number of people internally displaced by drought just this year is nearing Hunger 1 million, doesn't with wait another nearly 500,000 people displaced and, uh, due to conflict and homeless insecurity people in Somalia. cannot wait for resources. Uh, people that do not have uh, a latrine or uh, a, a clinic to send their children to cannot wait for resources. It is very urgent. It is needed now. Most of the internally displaced people live in difficult conditions in urban and peri-urban settings with very low chances of returning home. The High Commission has stressed the need to urgently step up humanitarian assistance in the country. Appeal to all of us, the humanitarian community, to accelerate the step up that we have already started. This is now dramatically urgent. We need, with the resources of our donors, uh, to be present, more present, to accompany the government and the local authorities who are quite overwhelmed by the emergency here. Earlier on Friday, Grandi met with President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, Prime Minister Hamza Abdi Barre and heads of UN humanitarian agencies in Mogadishu to explore durable solutions for displaced populations. Grandi reiterated the crucial need to invest in livelihoods, resilience, infrastructure, development, climate adaptation, and durable solutions to ensure those affected can adapt and thrive in the future. Over 16,000 16, Somalis have also crossed into the Dal. Over 16,000 Somalis have also crossed into Dolo Ado, Ethiopia, from the end. Over 16,000 Somalis have also crossed into Dolo Ado. Ethiopia from the end of 2021 to June 2022. An estimated 20,000 Somali refugees have also arrived in Kenya this year, fleeing a complex mix of conflict and drought. Students at Simad University in Mogadishu have elected a new president of the Association of Students at the Institute of Higher Learning. According to results, after hotly contested race, Hassan Ahmed Jakula garnered the most votes. He received 29% of the votes cast. Mr. Jakula faced four other contenders for the university's top seat. Following the pronouncement as the new boss, the university student, as the university student, the student leader was cheered by supporters and students. The elections in line with the Simad University's extracurricular activities are held every year in which students elect their leaders. Simad Students Government serves as a platform that allows students to showcase their talents, develop their careers, and exercise their organization and leadership skills. In 1999, Simad was established as an institute of higher learning to foster academic excellence after 11 years of consistency and success and achievement. The Board of Trustees upgraded the institute to a fully-fledged university on January 2011. Efforts by Somali women in conflict prevention and peace building have been lauded by stakeholders as more Somali women take part in rebuilding the nation. The UNF is in Somalia and the federal government have said women participation in peace efforts will help maintain and promote peace and security in Somalia. The Somali government and international partners have noted progress in raising women's participation in Somalia's peace, security and development. Stakeholders met in Mogadishu to discuss the disproportionate and unique impact of armed conflict on women and girls at a gathering of government, civil society and United Nations representatives. Uh, how encouraging it is to see so many women leaders from so many different areas of activity. We often think of leadership as being primarily in the political arena. But I think this group today shows that citizens, women, can be leaders, yes, in politics. Aside from government and civil society, as well as United Nations representatives, participants at the event also included women leaders from Somalia's federal parliament, the business sector, youth groups, educational institutions, and Somalia's security forces. 
education of girls in particular has multiple benefits for the overall health and well-being and effectiveness of the society. Adopted in 2000, Resolution 1325 reaffirms the important role of women in the prevention and resolution of conflicts, peace negotiations, peace building, peacekeeping, humanitarian response, and in post-conflict reconstruction. It also stresses the importance of equal participation and full involvement in all efforts for the maintenance and promotion of peace and security. The UN Special Representative for Somalia said a focus on the role that Somali women can and should play in their country's decision-making process in the political arena, particularly their representation and inclusion in all levels of government, as well as their key role in economic development, including their need to be able to access financing. At times are, of course, victims, but women are also important, essential actors in taking the fight to al-Shabaab in all of its arenas. Of course, not just combat, but economics, in terms of countering al-Shabaab ideology and its perversion of the Islamic religion. And women have a central role to play in that as well. And your messages to that end were very clear today. He also addressed the importance of education and peace building a knowledge base so that women and girls are better able to contribute to their country's development. The UN Special Representative acknowledged the participants' commitment to combat al-Shabaab and the negative effect that the militant group has had on Somalia. The world's body's top official in Somalia ended his remarks with an assurance of the UN's firm commitment to work with the participants in advocating and advancing Resolution 1325 and with a call for unity and collaboration. Somalia has adopted a national action plan on women, peace and security, which will be implemented from 2022 and 2026. The national action plan was launched in September by the country's prime minister. A humanitarian agency has warned that the arrival of new refugees from Somalia could spike outbreak of communicable diseases as more people arrived in the Dab refugee camp. The camp, which was officially closed by the Kenyan government, is now receiving hundreds of displaced people who have been displaced by drought in Somalia. With hundreds of people from Somalia arriving each week in Kenya's Dadaab refugee complex, living conditions in camps hosting over 233,000 refugees and thousands of new arrivals since January are worsening. Given the conditions in these overcrowded camps, there is high risk of disease outbreaks warns Medicine Sans Frontiers, MSF. MSF has urged the UN Refugee Agency and Kenyan authorities to ramp up humanitarian support and urgently launch vaccination campaigns. People from Somalia are escaping a crippling drought, violence and continuing conflict in the country. Many of those arriving are coming from southern Somalia where missiles and cholera outbreaks have occurred recently. Last week, the humanitarian organization teams recorded three missiles cases and two suspected cases of cholera in Dagahle, one of the three refugee camps that make up the Dab refugee complex. Previous missiles vaccinations in the Dadaab camps will provide some protection to children, but the situation can still be life-threatening for new arrivals who are unlikely to have been vaccinated. Enhancing cholera prevention measures, including cholera vaccination, is even more critical as Kenya has reported ongoing outbreaks in six counties. The lack of reception systems to identify and welcome the new arrivals makes this task very difficult and further delays their access to humanitarian assistance. According to data collected by non-governmental organizations, the number of arrivals from Somalia to Dagahle alone has doubled from August to September, reaching over 800 people. This number is estimated to keep increasing steadily in the coming weeks and months. Many of the new arrivals say they need shelter, food, safe drinking and water latrines, as open defecation is now common. Refugees already living in the Gahle have been generously hosting many of newly arrived people, sharing their mega resources with them. MSF said, Humanitarian assistance will also need to be scaled up to address the needs of the new arrivals and the long-time refugees and host communities, as they have also been suffering under the drought. 
According to UNHCR, as of July, the DAB hosted over 233,000 registered refugees, many of whom have been living in the camps for over three decades. And in his first address as Britain's Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak has vowed on Tuesday to lead a government of integrity. Rishi Sunak officially became the new Prime Minister of the United Kingdom on Tuesday. Sunak met King Charles III, who appointed him Britain's newest Prime Minister. He promised to better govern the UK, which he said were lacking when he resigned from former Prime Minister Boris Johnson's administration. Uh, after revolting against his boss. His, his brief speech minutes after he was asked to form a new government by King Charles III was tightly focused and there was no celebration as well as victory lap. The 42-year-old Sunak, the youngest prime minister in 200 years, stressed the remarks, I fully appreciate how hard things are. Has destabilized energy markets and supply chains the world over. I want to pay tribute to my predecessor, Liz Truss. She was not wrong to want to improve growth in this country. It is a noble aim. Meanwhile, President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud has congratulated the new Prime Minister for becoming the leader of Conservative Party and the leader of the UK government. Somalia and UK enjoy strong bilateral ties built on cooperation and mutual respect, said Villa Somalia in a statement. We look forward to further strengthening our partnership in all areas of mutual interest, added the statement from Villa Somalia. Meanwhile, Brazilian police on Monday charged Roberto Jefferson, a former federal deputy and ally of President uh, Bolonisaro, with four counts of attempt of murder and accused of using guns as well as grenades in Brazil. At least two officers were wounded in the incident. Jefferson had been under house arrest since the start of the year. He was ordered to return to prison after he made disregarding remarks online against a female member of the court. Bolsonaro sought to distance himself from his ally after the showdown. On social media, he said anyone who shoots at police is a bandit. And with that story, we come to the end of this broadcast, an English edition of news from Dalsan TV, Somalia's premier television news network, broadcasting to you the latest news from Somalia and around the world in both English and Somali. Keep it Dalsan TV for the latest news in both English and Somali. And our broadcast in Somali is coming subsequently. Bye-bye for now.